Hello, this is Samuel with this week's physics focus on refraction. Now you probably remember refraction from GCSE level. And here we have a diagram showing this dark blue line is the boundary between, let's say on top here we have air and underneath is glass. Light blue line is the normal line. That's just put in there so that we can measure relative to that. So the line at right angles to the surface at the point where the light is entering. And here, this red arrow is a ray of light arriving at the surface of the glass. Now, as you remember, when light goes from air into glass, it slows down a little bit. And this has the effect of causing it to bend somewhat like so. Because the right hand side of this ray of light, looking down on it here, enters the glass first and therefore gets slowed down first, that pulls the light round a bit to the right. Now, at A level we deal with this a little bit more mathematically and there's an equation that we can use to describe what's going on here. So, that's to do with the refractive index, which is what we're talking about now. In air, the light is travelling at, no big surprise here, the speed of light, which we usually give the letter C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second. OK, that's the speed of light really in a vacuum, but the speed of light in air is fractionally slower than the speed of light in a vacuum, but only by a tiny fraction of a percent, so we're still going to call that 3 times 10 to the 8. In glass, the speed varies a bit depending on exactly what kind of glass it is, but the speed here is less than C, less than 3 times 10 to the 8. So if you measure that speed, and of course we know how fast it's travelling here in air, we can define this quantity n for glass, g for glass, which is defined as being c over v. It's simply the ratio of the speeds. The speed of light in a vacuum and the speed of light in whatever it is we're talking about at the time, glass in this case. And that is what we call the refractive index that quantity there. So you could define that or measure that for a whole range of different materials, anything that light can travel through, or any type of electromagnetic radiation, come to that, and work out what it is. Now, this then gets really useful because, let's go for green, if you measure these two angles here, let's call that theta 1 and theta 2, these are the angles of the light ray measured relative to the normal line, which is the standard way of doing this with reflection and refraction, because of course you might have a curved surface. So it's easier simply to put a right angle normal line in and measure everything relative to that. Right angles at the point that we're interested in. And the link between these angles and the refractive indices is something called Snell's Law. which says that N1, the refractive index of your first medium, so this now could be anything, not just air and glass, this could be water into glass, it could be air into diamond, um, whatever, anything that the light will travel through. So refractive index for the first one, N1 sine theta 1, equals N2, refractive index for the second material, 
sine theta 2. Now if you look at this here, this uh, equation, definition of the refractive index, substitute that in, we could rearrange this to write it as sine theta 1 over sine theta 2, as in the ratio of the sines of those two angles, that ratio is the same as the ratio of their speeds. So where it's travelling faster, the angle is larger. However, when we define the refractive index, because it's defined this way round, the refractive index is always bigger than 1. C is always bigger than the speed of light in the material we're talking about, because C is the top speed of everything anywhere. So a refractive index is always bigger than 1. If it's the closer to 1 it is, the closer these two speeds are to each other. And typically, you will be dealing with a refractive index of 1 point something, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, extreme cases would be things like diamond which has a refractive index of 2.4 or so so the speed of light actually more than halves when it goes from air into diamond which is a really big change but most of them are about the 1.2 1.3 value something like that so that's definition of the refractive index where it comes from it's actually a lot simpler than you might have uh, feared and how it's used in Snell's law Thanks for listening.